Hey, hey! My name is Jake, and in this video, I take a look at character creation systems, specifically the custom avatar systems, and determine what works and what doesn't in the hope that I and others won't repeat those mistakes. Before we get into the thick of it, though, I want to make an important distinction between avatars and characters. These definitions are not all inclusive, but they will be sufficient for this video. Avatars are the on-screen representation of the player. Characters are the on-screen representation, plus their narrative, gear, etc. I'll cover further character creation systems like classes and swag in another video. First off, I've spent a lot of time playing with avatar creation. Depending on how complex or interesting the system is, I can spend upwards of two hours creating the perfect avatar. When I'm creating, sometimes it's just to make someone who looks like me. But more often than not, I'm looking to experience the game as someone who interests me. I might be role-playing a specific playstyle. Regardless, creating the avatar from scratch can be helpful in connecting to that character. I turned to Reddit to see how other folks felt about avatar creation. The three biggest reasons people made their own avatars were that they could make someone who looked aesthetically pleasing, make a character to roleplay as, or make someone who looks like them. There were also several barriers to really enjoying avatar creation. If the system had too many options to customize, or they couldn't make their avatars look the way they wanted, or the load times were eating up too much time, or the system wasn't robust or interesting enough, or the types of presets were uninteresting. So I decided to come up with a quick system and check out the avatar creation in a few games. I would make three different avatars in each game, one that was quickly made using a preset, one that looked pretty, and one that looked glitchy and or horrifying. But then I didn't do any of that, and instead I just played. WWE games hold a special place in my heart. I remember buying that game every year and then making tons of wrestlers. My friends and I did backyard wrestling, so I usually made us first. And then I made wrestlers who weren't in WWE who I thought were cool, like Rob Van Dam or Samoa Joe. There are tons of settings to play with, so I could get lost in that system for days. 2K16 isn't all that different from previous entries. Overall, there's still a lot of stuff to customize. I could easily spend hours making wrestlers in here. But this system still feels a little... raw. The facial morph system is cool, but you can mess it up pretty quickly and you can't revert it. Categories are a little confusing. Like, why not combine face paint and face art? Are these two things really so different? The slider labels are confusing. For example, why does buff always mean bigger? A bigger butt does not always mean a more muscular butt. Warnings are inconsistent. On more than one occasion, I backed out accidentally, and in some of those circumstances, I prevented disaster because it warned me, and in other circumstances, I just lost all my progress. While the avatar creation system in WWE 2K16 is incredibly robust, it's also not really legible. You start Mass Effect, would you like to play as John Shepard? If not, it asks if you'd like to play as Mal Shep or Fem Shep or if you'd like to customize your avatar. For either gender, the number of presets provide a reasonable amount of diversity. The UI, unlike WWE, is fairly well labeled, although there are sliders like iris color and scar that should be lists or menus because they don't actually represent a spectrum. There are quite a few sliders, however, they don't provide much control. Adjustments to facial features are minimal and are usually constrained by gendered assumptions. Female faces can really only be feminine, male faces can only be masculine. Men can't wear makeup, and women can't have facial hair. And you can't have an old avatar for some reason. I don't think I could make a unique looking avatar using Mass Effect system. I suspect that Bioware did this to avoid avatars distracting from the super serious storyline. But in the creation system it just feels arbitrary. The first sim you're provided when loading Create a Household Mode is random. The game includes various randomizers throughout the UI. Random name, random appearance, random traits. There are a large number of presets, although most of them are, as the game puts it, average, weight, young adults. I don't care for that, but hey, they made assumptions, what you gonna do about it? There are a load of sliders and options to create with, and the UI is consistent and legible throughout. However, Maxis made some weird design choices when determining limitations. 
The muscle slider makes a minimal change to the body mesh, but the weight slider causes a much bigger change. Women have a slider for breast size, and breast size is affected by weight, but not muscle. There are two options for freckles and two for beauty marks, and freckles, by the way, are hidden by dark skin. There are only three realistic skin tones, though you can change the value of those tones, so maybe that helps to create more accurate colors. Men can wear makeup, but they can't wear women's clothing. Women can't have facial hair or body hair. Old sims can't have muscle mass. Men can't wear tall socks. These limitations seem arbitrary and unnecessary. Using a slider needs to be predictable. It should also be understandable and labels should be descriptive. Slider labels should explain what you're changing instead of using descriptors that are arbitrary to most users, like using axes or words like left and right. In WWE 2K16, the slider labels are vague and or meaningless. In Mass Effect, some of the sliders don't actually work on a spectrum like you would expect them to. If you provide too many sliders or pieces to control, then the user can become overwhelmed with the possibilities. If you don't provide enough, then the player isn't able to create an avatar that is unique to them. WWE 2K16 provides a ton of sliders, but no way to keep them in check or to revert them. Mass Effect has a good number of sliders, but the amount you can change is meager. The Sims 3, I think, has a good balance, even though some of their limitations are absurd. I understand that a developer might feel pressured to make limitations based on gender or age, but they're unnecessary. These constraints are frustrating to players who want to create non-standard avatars. A user might want to make their avatar look like them, or they might want to experiment. Arbitrary limitations stifle that creativity. The Sims 3 had a number of these inhibitions, and Mass Effect restricted your age only to that of the canonized characters. Avatars can be one way to express who you are. They can also be a way to explore other playstyles or ideas. Lots of people are interested in avatar creation, but there are a lot of reasons to not bother. Part of that is on the player, but I think a great deal of that accessibility can be opened up by the developer. If we remain critical of this often overlooked system, and we keep making it better, easier, and more open, then I think we can make something that almost anyone would enjoy using. As designers, if we design more competent and intuitive creation systems for our players, that means our players can express themselves even more.